In chemistry, there are a couple changes we'll deal with. We'll deal with changes that are physically, physical changes, and we'll deal with some chemical changes. <clears throat> now, in a physical change, uh, we're talking about something that changes, but it is not turned into something new. Okay? A change in which something, uh, the identity doesn't change. Okay, so let me give you an example. I take a rock and I grab a hammer and I smash it. Is it still a rock? It is. So I physically change it. I think you would agree with me. The rock doesn't look like it did before. It's in a bunch of little pieces. But it is still a rock. All right. So those are that's a physical change. I'm going to do a few more for you in class so you can see the, uh, uh, what I'm talking about. But those are the kinds of things we're looking for. You haven't changed it into a new thing. If it was like our last example, and I had um, some spheres, okay, paired up, when they react, when it was all done, uh, they're still paired up. Now, there's got to be a difference, though, right? Because of this word right here, change. Okay. So when we talk about a physical change, the change that we have seen is either the arrangement, the location, or the speed might change. When I say arrangement, imagine I grab um, uh, some newspaper and I go ahead and wad it up into a big ball. Okay, we have changed maybe the arrangement of some of the uh, some of those particles. Instead of being all flat, now they're all crumpled up. Okay, or the location. Imagine I grabbed um, a magazine and I tore it in half. Well, it's still a magazine, but it's changed a little bit. And then as far as, as this as far as this particle, uh, the speed goes, okay, the thing that's important right there, when you change the speed of particles, that's when you change things from a solid to a liquid to a gas. Okay? Because water is still water, right? And this does confuse people sometimes. Water is still water. It doesn't matter if it's ice uh, or, let's see, steam. Okay, so let's look at the other kind of change. And this is the change that, without a doubt, you'll probably find out to be a more, a more enjoyable change. And that's a chemical change. And with a chemical change, we've got to think about going back to this last page. Okay? In a chemical reaction, you get a chemical change. What we have is we get this uh, a new substance. Whoops, pardon me. Not the first time I did that, and surely won't be the last. Uh, in a chemical change, you get something new, and we've kind of already addressed that. So let's say I take some sugar and some sulfuric acid, and I put them together, and I get this really neat uh, reaction, and I make some uh, carbon. Right. Or here's a nice little change. I take some oxygen gas and I take some hydrogen gas and I add a spark and it makes a little bit of water. All right. We've made something new. And that's the, the real important thing about uh, chemical changes. Okay. And here's the other super important thing. It involves energy. You can't change. You can't make this change. You can't make these two different uh, molecules combine unless you uh, add a little bit of energy. Okay? And sometimes the reactions give off energy, and sometimes they they uh, absorb energy. But any way you do it, uh, energy is going to be involved in making a reaction go. All right. So let me just give you a, a simple example of a chemical reaction. And here's the one I just drew out. Right, we've got uh, hydrogen, and this one, the reason there's twos here, okay, is this one is actually balanced, so that's kind of neat. But here's another reaction that's co uh, quite ferocious. Here we're taking some aluminum, we're adding some iron oxide, okay, and i got to heat it up. I'm going to put a little triangle there. i got to heat it up. Well, that's a poor triangle. And then what we do is we make iron and aluminum oxide, and this is called the thermite reaction, and you will see that. In fact, if you want to see it, you can go YouTube it right now. Uh, but it makes molten iron. I mean, it gives you a ridiculous amount of energy. It's a real ferocious reaction. Okay, So we've got, whenever we, you see an equation like this, okay, you know a chemical change has taken place. 
this one too. Okay, and what this whole thing right here is simply a chemical equation. We're just briefly talking about this now, but we will spend a lot of time with this. And in fact, you'll learn how to balance these. You'll learn how to predict products. It'll be quite uh, interesting. Okay. Now, the other thing that I want you to be aware of, though, is on this side of our uh, arrow are the reactants. In other words, those things come together to make something. And on this side are the products. Okay. So those are the things that are produced, and hopefully that makes sense to you. So we've got reactants and products, and uh, as I mentioned before, energy is going to be involved, right? So I want to do just a little bitty practice with you. Look at these, and uh, pause the video right now. Take a moment, write a P for a physical change, and see if it's a chemical change. And again, ask yourself, are we making something new, or is it just uh, the atoms are rearranged uh, by their location, their speed, um, or their placement, okay? So take a moment to do that. All right, did you do that? Well, let's see. Hopefully for this one, you put C, okay, milk souring. I think you would agree with me that after, the, after milk gets sour, you don't have milk anymore. You've made something new, and there's some kind of acid that's made uh, that makes it sour. What about burning? Chemical change, again, any type of burning is going to involve a chemical change. When you're done burning gas, you no longer have gas. Ice melting, okay, physical change. When ice melts, you just get liquid water, right? So it's still water. Lighting a match, okay, lighting, energy, fire, chemical change. Water evaporating, right? Now, if liquid water evaporates, it evaporates to steam, right? So it's a physical change. Chopping some wood, I have a big chunk of, chunk of wood, I chop it, when I'm done, I still have wood, physical change. Burning of wood, well there you go, burning, okay? I think you would agree with me that if you look at what's left after you've burned uh, a log in the campfire, it's no longer wood, you've got ash and soot and stuff like that, okay? Breath fogging a mirror, well, this one might have been tricky for you, but this is a physical change. Right now you're exhaling water vapor. If you hold a mirror up and you exhale, uh, that's all, all that is is water vapor condensing on the mirror. So you've changed water from a gas to a liquid on the mirror. Cooking an egg. Cooking again. Right? Now, a lot of people go, well, it's still an egg. Well, I would agree it's still an egg. But go ahead and eat an egg before it's been cooked and eat an egg after it's cooked. And you tell me it's the same thing. Okay, you've made something new. What you've done is you've denatured the proteins and uh, it makes it taste a lot better. Bleaching a stain. Ooh, bleaching a stain. Whoa. Chemical change. All right. And what bleaching does is it causes the structure of the stain to change so that you don't see it. And it's my understanding that a lot of the stains are still there. All you need is a little UV light to see them. All right. So hopefully that made sense. You did well. And this brings me to our last little slide. And this is a simple review of what we did uh, in our first uh, couple days of our labs. And that was doing some chemical reactions and finding some evidence for some kind of chemical change. These are the things that you see if you get, if we go way back to this page, if you're going to get a chemical change right here, okay, these are the signs that that has happened. Right? And you already know these because we've done these in the lab. So let's look at the first one. Evolution of gas, right? So right here I've got a good example of uh, uh, some fizzing going on. Maybe it's an Alka-Seltzer tablet. Maybe it's vinegar and baking soda. All right, But either way, right in here you can see we're making some bubbles. Bubbles, fizzing, some kind of odor. Those are all forms of gas. What's another one? Formation of a precipitate. All right. We've done that in the lab. We've got two clear liquids. We've got a clear liquid right here. If you look at this one right here, right here is a clear liquid. And up here we have, it's a clear liquid. It's yellow. But look what you make once you pour them together. You made a solid. Okay. So you made something new. That is called a precipitate. Okay. And anytime you make a precipitate, you have... Uh, an evidence of chemical reaction. What's another one? A release absorption of energy. Okay, Great reaction right here that I don't do anymore because this involves chromium and uh, 
the chromium that it makes is a little, they say it's a little bit toxic. Um, Aaron Brockovich movie that talked about uh, hexavalent chromium, and I think that's what this makes. But anytime energy is involved, so um, you can imagine something getting very uh, hot, hot, or getting very cold, okay, that is a sign of a chemical reaction. Okay. The other thing that I don't have an example of, but we'll see, is the giving off of light. So you've probably been at a fair somewhere, and you bought those little glow sticks. You break a little glass vial, and then they glow. and They glow for a number of hours. They don't feel hot. They don't feel cold. But light is given off. The only way that happens is if you uh, have a chemical reaction. right? And then our very last one, some kind of color change. All right. You can see over here, that we made some bright yellow, okay? This uh, orange right here is turning into, um, well, it's actually turning into kind of a darker color, right? Cooking, think about that. You break, bake some chicken, goes from skin color to brown. Okay, those are evidences of chemical change. So there you go. If any of this doesn't make sense, please have me clear it up in class, and uh, I'll see you later.